Hey, welcome back to the shop. My name is Eric. And today, uh, I, what I did was, with yesterday's video, is I reached out to you guys and asked if you had anything that you wanted to hear about. A topic that I could talk to you about that, you know, my views on it. And Jonathan brought up a topic of the difference in what, gas is today compared to what it was back when I first started you know, when I was growing up biggest change is price alright back when I was growing up gas was 30 35 cents a gallon yeah and at that time it contained a lot of lead that was your main gas was it was leaded gas and they started phasing that out. And I think it was in the mid to late 70s, maybe 80s, when they finally come out with the unleaded. But they still had the leaded available, but they had the unleaded. And they were doing it because the lead is a pollutant. It helped gas engines fire and keep the gas fresh longer. But it also caused emissions. And that's what a lot of people that are, you know, trying to save the planet, per se, is trying to reduce the pollutants that we breathe in and make it more efficient. So that was one of the biggest changes, is when unleaded first started coming out, you could smell the difference. When a car started, you know, the leaded gas compared to the unleaded, the unleaded smell like rotten eggs compared to the leaded. You know, you could smell the real gas. And it lacked power. It, it didn't have the giddy up and go that the leaded had. And I remember my grandfather buying our first unleaded vehicle. And it was an Oldsmobile Cutlass. Brand new. And they were trying to keep up with changes. And they were trying to make vehicles more efficient so they could run better on the unleaded. And they did come quite a ways, you know, that they've done a lot of things to the engines so that they can burn more efficient on using the unleaded. The octane levels back then were 91 to 93, maybe 94 leaded and the unleaded I want to say was in the high 80s maybe 91 max and that's what you're seeing today is they're all unleaded there's no lead contained in any gas today so up until that point you know, comparing the gas from when I was growing up to then is you didn't get the performance. You didn't have the power. Small engines did not want to run well on it. You had a lot of problems with carburetors getting gummed up and everything else. Leaded, I mean, you never saw those problems. You know, growing up, you know, you went and filled up your car and, or your lawnmower or you push mower or what have you. And that gas could sit there all winter long in your rototiller and go out in the spring and it would start right up. I started seeing issues with the unleaded not doing so well by having it stored over the winter, per se, in the rototiller. And you're seeing that a lot today where if you're not keeping up with the newer stuff they weren't made to run on the fuel that we have today so I'm saying that we had better fuel back when I was growing up than what we have now we have a lot more issues but we've come a long way on the newer equipment to, that's going to run on the newer fuel problem runs into is if you have like the the old Massey Ferguson 165 gas 
she's not going to perform as well as she did when she was running on leaded gas. You know, a lot of the older farm tractors and stuff, you know, have more issues with the unleaded and the lower octanes. I mean, I can remember with the, the old GMC truck that we had, when the unleaded come out, it was a leaded vehicle, but we you could put unleaded in it. And you could hear it pinging. And you knew that you, weren't, you needed to add a higher level of octane into that engine. So that was the biggest issue. And then there was the issue of sulfur and gas. You know, SO2. And they wanted to reduce that. So the sulfur content was also reduced later in years in the unleaded. And they also put a lot of additives in there to keep the injectors and stuff clean so that it wouldn't get gummed up. And that brings us to today's gas. And that is now we have not only unleaded, but it's ethanol. Ethanol was added back 10, 15 years ago. And supposedly it was added in because it was a renewable energy. And you can go either way on that. They said that when they did that, that it decreased the amount of corn production that went for food products to feed other countries. I don't think it was a great move, to be honest with you. You know, I've seen so many problems now with the ethanol. The ethanol does not store well. The ethanol takes and it draws moisture ethanol fuel will separate if you just take shake up a gas gas and get a clear container maybe a gallon jug and fill that with that gas let it sit for a day or two and you will start to see everything separate your ethanol will be on the bottom and the ethanol has a tendency of drawing moisture so now when you have the moisture being drawn in now you have the water sitting on the bottom, the ethanol next, and then the fuel, unleaded gas, on top. And where do most small engines draw their fuel? Even your big engines, where are they drawing their fuel from? And that's normally from the bottom of the tank. I have yet to see a machine that will run on water or clear ethanol so you run into issues of hard starting water in your fuel the ethanol not burning where it's hard to start the engines the ethanol fuel is eating up rubbers and o-rings and everything else diaphragms inside carburetors And they're talking still yet about increasing the ethanol. But that comes back into the old engines that people have that were built back when we were running leaded gas. It's harder and harder and harder to, you know, keep those machines running. They've got the, the three levels of unleaded gas, then you have the premium that's supposed to be unleaded, just straight gas. <clears throat> but I'm saying that separate. So, if you're running small engines, the older ones that ran on the lead or early unleaded, it's better to go with the 91% octane. For those engines, you'll get better performance out of them. So those are the biggest changes that I've seen over the years in fuel. Are we better today than we were? As far as pollutants and emissions and stuff, I'd say yes. As far as, you know, performance and storage of fuel and 
we've gone backwards. So today's fuel, you don't want to store it very long. And if you're going to put gas into a lawnmower and you have a can that's sitting there for a month or a couple weeks or something, shake the can up before you dump the gas in because it's already started to separate in that can. And what I recommend to everybody out there with their small engines is to put in a shutoff in your fuel line every time you use it unless you're using it often if you're using it like once a week it's it's still a good habit to have while it's still running shut the fuel off and let the engine burn all the fuel out of that carburetor why do I want you to do that because ethanol fuel and unleaded contain stuff that will gum up and eat your carburetor from the inside out by shutting it off there's there's no gas or ethanol in that carburetor it's still in your fuel tank but it's not sitting in that carburetor drawing moisture and everything else and a lot of times you know we joke with people but when you take a container and you, on some of them that have the uh, bottom screw that you can take out of the carburetor that will allow the fuel to drain out of the carburetor, we've taken a glass and opened that up and with it sitting for a certain amount of time, it drew a lot of moisture. So there's a lot of water sitting in that cup that we just drew out. And you're gonna get moisture drawn into the fuel tank. So, shake it up and hope for the best i hope that helps answer that question for you jonathan and i hope you guys have enjoyed the video uh like like i say i like to hear from you guys so if you have any comments on the topic if something i missed because sometimes i jump over things too quickly but on that note you guys have a great day